We are going to start by drawing out our flower. We are going to draw a circle in the middle that's not too big, not too small. Then we are going to add a bumpy line that goes all the way around that circle. Then we are going to add a big swirly line inside of our circle. Then we're going to add straight lines from the middle of our petals out to the edge. All the way out to the edge. Do not stop in the middle of your paper. Next we will add a wavy line coming from the top of our petals. Do it very carefully. Also be sure that your wavy lines go all the way out to the edge of your paper as well. Don't stop too short. Next we will find a black crayon. This part is sped up by the way. And I am tracing each and every line that I drew with pencil tracing over it with my crayon. I want to do it really nice and thick. Not then it would be like that. Ugh, no, that's not good. Go back over it. Press down hard with your crayon. Make sure you get every single line. I even press so hard that I break my crayon. Oh no, it's okay. I keep going. Make sure that you are not drawing too fast on this part. I actually did draw a lot slower than this video shows. I just wanted to speed it up so that we're not taking all class to watch me draw really slowly. Once we finish that part, we are going to find our colorful crayons. No more drawing with the black crayon. We want to find some nice bright pretty colors and draw some shapes inside of our petals. I have squares here, switch to a different color, do some triangles, fill in those petals, switch to another color. I've got some ovals here that are kind of hard to see but you'll see them a little bit better later. This technique that we are going to do only works well if you press down really hard with the crayon when you draw. You cannot draw light or it will not show up. You want to make sure that you are doing different colors and not all the same colors. You want a nice variety, meaning a lot of different colors, lots of different shapes. Next, you will be adding fun different kinds of lines using your colorful crayons. No more drawing with those black crayons. We want a variety of colors now. I can add a dotted line or a zigzag or curly or dashed. It is up to you on what kind of line you add and you can repeat some lines but try to space them out so you're not repeating the same line next to it keep adding different lines with different colors ones that will show up really well when we go to paint fill in all those areas between the black lines also make sure that these lines go from the edge of your flower all the way to the edge of the paper now we are ready to paint yay we are going to be using temper cakes. My temper cakes look a little different than yours because yours will be in a tray and mine are in a plate. We want to make sure we use the colors and not the black and the white and the brown temper cake. I don't have brown on my temper cake plate. You will have it on yours. Don't use it. We want to use the colors today. When you use temper cakes, you have to wake those temper cakes up. They are sleeping and they don't really want to work because they're so tired. So watch as I wake it up a little bit. See what happens when I go to use this on the paper. It doesn't really show up, right? What's going on? It's not woken up, so we need to add more water and I need to wake him up for just a little bit longer. Wake up, yellow, wake up. Now let's see what happens when I use this yellow paint. Now it shows up so much better because I have woken it up. You have to activate that paint with the water 
waking it up and making it ready to work for you. When you are ready to change colors when using Timber Cakes, we have to wash out our brush really good. Swirl it around and wipe, wipe your brush on the edge of the container. You do not want to tap, tap on the edge of the container just like I'm doing. Ugh. Some water got all over my paper, I can see it now. You don't want to do that. You want to just swirl and wipe. When we are choosing our colors for painting our petals, we don't want to choose the same color as we have already done in crayon. We want to choose a different color that will contrast from what we've already done in crayon. You do want to paint really, really carefully, but sometimes we do end up going out of the lines like I just did, and that's okay. We're not going to worry about it. I do want you to go a lot slower than you see me painting and waking up my paint here because I have fast forwarded this video so we're not spending so long watching me paint. Go carefully and slowly. Another really important note about when we are painting is we don't want to scrub our brush like that. We want to slowly, slowly wipe, wipe our brush on our paper. If we scrub our brush, that messes up our brush's hair and we don't want to mess up his hair. We want to keep it so nice. Again, make sure you're waking that paint up really, really good. You all saw that it did not show up on my paper, so I'm waking it up. Wake up, orange. And now it looks so, so much better. Now I'm going to paint the inside of my flower and I want to make sure I choose colors that I have not already used in the petals. Again, wake up that paint, make sure it's really, really activated and woken up. Do it really nice and slow and choose a color that you have not already used before. Now I'm going to paint in between the lines that I have drawn in black. I want to use some colors I've not already used before or have not used much of yet. I'm waking that red up really, really good and I'm gonna paint so carefully. I want to put a messy mat underneath my painting so that I don't get that extra paint on the table. I can go right off the edge of my paper and on to the messy mat and it'll keep our tables nice and clean for us. Another thing that I want you to know is that you can turn your painting so that the part you're working on is closer to you. You don't want to have to reach across your painting and get your arm or your sleeve in the wet paint. Just pull the part you're working on closer to you and turn your painting as you work. I haven't mentioned this yet before, but I want you to think about your paintbrush as if it was a person. We don't want to mess up our paintbrush's hair. Just like people have hair, paintbrushes have hair. When we paint, we should make sure our paintbrush's hair is standing straight up. We do not want to push our paintbrush down so that the hair is all spread out on the paper. It should stay nice and straight and to a point, just like mine does. Be sure that you paint the entire area between the black lines with the same color. See here I painted only half of it. You need to go back and finish and fill in that entire area so it's nice and complete. 
I thought about using that purple with the area I've already used purple crayon in, so I decided to use a different color so that that purple crayon line stands out and it doesn't blend in with the paint. Again, make sure you're thinking about what colors you're putting side by side. We don't want to put the same color side by side because then it becomes hard to tell that your painting is a flower. We want it to stand out by using a variety of colors. I keep using that same word, but it's very important. You don't want the same color side by side. No same colors touching each other. The technique that we are using today is called wax resist. The wax comes from the crayon that we used before and we are painting over the crayon and the paint beads up and off of the crayon so that it shows up really, really well. If you have the issue of your paint not spreading like I did, you need to make sure you add more water, wake up that paint, and then it will spread so much easier. As you finish your painting, make sure that you have no white spaces showing and you have filled in every available area on your painting. We want it so nice and colorful, no empty white spaces. Now I am done and you are ready to create your own beautiful flower line painting.